Well, I will continue to maintain Joe Biden's new EPA rule is not about climate, it's not about electric vehicles, although that's part of it. It is about big government socialism taking over the private economy. Now, joining me is my pal Stephen Miller, former White House senior policy advisor and founder of America First Legal. Now, Steve Miller, I, you know as much about this as anybody. I'm just saying the EPA thing, I'm not going to say it's a ruse because it's actually going to be a big problem disrupting the entire fleet of cars. But you know what? This gives EPA and the Biden administration and all their crazy obsessions over climate, this gives them an opportunity to run the car business number one, and number two, to abolish and totally eliminate the fossil fuel business. It's big government socialism. Uh, Joe Stalin couldn't have done it better. What's your take, Steve Miller? Well, first of all, Larry, I miss the old days when Congress used to pass the laws and the president used to sign or veto them. Oh. We're now talking about effectively banning the combustion engine <laughs> that revolutionized all of civilization without so much as a hearing in Congress, let alone a bill passing the House, passing the Senate, being signed into law. How can something of such breathtaking, audacious scope be done by unelected, lifetime tenured bureaucrats at the EPA? This administration prowls on endlessly, democracy, 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 democracy. Well, if we're actually going to live in a democracy, then the elected representatives have to make our laws, not the unelected bureaucrats. I think it's a great point. You know, it's funny. We need a vote, an up or down vote in Congress on the internal combustion engine. Go stick. It could be very yeah, it simple. Seems like it would be a. That's right. And no, no, you know what? I had, that is the bluntest, simplest, best characterization of this battle. I should have said that myself last night. You're exactly, <laughs> you're totally, no, no, you're, you have a knack for it. It's terrific stuff. The other thing that's so interesting, Steve, people don't want it. People don't want to pay for electric vehicles. We don't have the resources, the electricity resources to pay for it uh, and to finance it. And they won't even let us drill, you know, for the minerals that would go into the batteries. So not only can we not do it, not only do we want, uh, don't want to afford it, it's also a big, big Benny to China. This is like the bailout China approach. Well, you have to appreciate the irony of this is that the environmentalists or the so-called environmentalists the phony environmentalists who don't want to let us drill for clean American energy, they want us to use dirty overseas energy, want us to switch to electric vehicles, but won't let us actually mine the minerals to make the batteries. Mm -hmm. And so that also now has to be done in foreign countries that, again, don't have environmental regulations or environmental rules or really any standards at all. But of course, it will make us completely dependent on the foreign producers of the minerals that we need for these batteries. And as far as the American consumer is concerned, yes, it is much too expensive, but also consumers value safety and reliability. And if you have a major disruption in the grid, if you have a major national disaster, a hurricane, whatever it is, the ability to get gasoline into your car to protect your family, to go somewhere safe, they don't have to worry about whether this route or that route has such and such or so many charging stations or whether those charging stations will be operable, is incredibly important for American families. And they should have the right, must have the right, to decide for themselves and their families what kind of vehicle they want to keep them safe in an emergency. Well, that's it. You know, goes to the other issues. The idea of socialism denies freedom and denies choice, denies consumer choice. Consumer choice is a staple of free market capitalism. And this would deny consumer choice. And I think that's, in some sense, it's an unheralded part of this whole uh, EPA problem and the whole Biden approach. They don't want us to have choice. They want to dictate terms to yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, the moment that more people want electric cars, more people will buy electric cars. Every single technological revolution in history that has helped our environment people started producing or purchasing that product when it became more desirable to do so. The switch from horses to cars saved so many lives, Larry. We didn't need the government to outlaw horses. They didn't have to pass a law saying horses are now illegal. It happened because the technology worked. And it'll be the same for electric cars. When the point in time comes when American consumers find them to be better and more reliable and cheaper, 
then combustion engines, they'll make the switch and they don't need to be coerced at all. Yeah, 100% right. It's great stuff. Uh, Steve, let, let me switch gears a little bit. Uh, um, your think tank, your Amer America First Legal, I think it's called, anyway, you've discovered yes. through Freedom of Information Act stuff, and I want you to walk through this. I'm not sure everybody understands it. I'm not sure I understand it. But, 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 with respect to this dreadful invasion and raid, of Mar-a-Lago by the FBI and the Justice Department and so forth. Uh, what I'm reading is that the White House, which denied any knowledge of this at all, actually knew about it ahead of time. What they did with it, I don't know. They may have commented on it. They may have encouraged it. I have no idea. But you found documentation that suggests that they've lied and the Biden White House knew about this Mar-a-Lago raid before it happened. What we found out is truly astounding. The White House, as you know, Larry, is not supposed to have any involvement whatsoever in high-profile investigations, let alone in the persecution of your chief political opponent. What we found is the White House specifically requested the documents from mar a from the National Archives before the raid, and then they transferred those documents to DOJ, which provided the predicate for the raid, or the pretext, I should say, for the raid. So far from being not involved or not aware, the White House was an integral player in the chain of events that led to the raid in Mar-a-Lago. White House Counsel's Office asked the National Archives for those documents, which is unprecedented that they would get involved, and they passed those documents that the, that the president had provided the National Archives to the Department of Justice prior to the raid, and again, which provided the pretext for that raid. So this is really something we've never seen before. It's quite shocking. It's going to be up to the House of Representatives, the Judiciary Committee, the Oversight Committee, and others to ultimately get to the bottom of this. So in effect, if I hear you right, the White House midwifed this raid that the documents That's were, the right word to use. Were That's the right word to use. Yeah, th uh, thank you. Because I've been puzzling through this. The, the reports of this are not good. That's why I wanted you to come on and clarify, because it is very important. So it went from the archives to the White House, and those docs then went into the Justice Department, and then on that basis, the Justice Department sent the FBI in to uh, invade the uh, former president's uh, privacy in exactly. his home. Exactly. I mean, I, so can you That's, ever... Yes, you summarized it perfectly. Well, thank you for that. Look, at, I mean, has anything like this ever happened before? Just this. I mean, a lot of things are going on and never happened before. I understand that. But just this, yeah. you've never done this before. We're living in the world before. every day of the unprecedented. Yeah. No, but this, this, is the, this is truly the most uh, stunning. And again, ultimately, Congress is going to need, because the National Archives and others misled Congress, they're going to need to do... Dozens of depositions. They're going to have to issue dozens of subpoenas to White House, National Archives, and DOJ to uncover all of this. And what I believe they will find is even more coordination and even more collusion than what we've already uncovered. Uh, which the White House continues to deny. Continues to deny. Is that right? Yep. All right. Just like they have been denying anything that they've ever been confronted with for two years, they will deny it even after the evidence is right in front of your eyes. Steve Miller, thank you very much for the insights. We appreciate it. On the cars and the judicial process. Thank you. you. Take care. Have a great weekend. My pleasure.